Genesis 1, verse 31. Quote, And God saw everything that he had made, unquote. Either all that he had made on the several six days of creation, he took a survey of them, looked over them again, as workmen do when they have finished their work, to see if anything is amiss or wanting. Not that anything of this nature can be supposed in the works of God, but such a survey is attributed to him after the manner of men, to show the completeness of his works and the excellency of them. Pachilius limits this to what has been done on this day, with respect to man, who alone, as he thinks, was the subject of this day's work. And so it respects the creation of man, after the image and likeness of God, the forming of the woman out of his rib, and so providing a, help, a suitable help for him, giving them dominion over all the creatures, and suitable food for the support of the animal life. And God reflected on this, and saw it was good in the issue as it was in itself. Quote, and behold, it was very good, unquote. It had been said of everything else at the close of each day's work, excepting the second, that it was good. But here the expression is stronger upon the creation of man, the chief and principal work of God, that it was very good, he being made upright and holy, bearing the image of the Creator upon him, and in such circumstances as to be happy and comfortable himself, and to glorify God. The phrase may be expressive, not only of the goodness of everything God had made, as it was in itself and in its use, but of his complacency and delight therein, everything being made for himself and for his pleasure. Revelations 4.11 Quote, In the evening and the morning were the sixth day, unquote. By that time all these works on this day were finished. The sun had gone round the earth, or the earth about that, for the space of twenty-four hours, which completed the sixth day within which term of time God had determined to finish all his works as he did. This day, according to Capitalists, was the 23rd of April, and according to Archbishop Usher, the 28th of October, or as others, the 6th of September. Mr. Um, Whiston, as had before been observed, is of opinion that the six days of creation were equal to six years, and the Persians have a tradition which they pretend to have received from um, Zoroastrus, that God created the world not in six natural days, but in six times or spaces of different lengths, called in their tongues um, G-A-H-A-N and then B-A-R-H-A. The first of these spaces in which the heavens were created was a space of 45 days. The second, in which the waters were created, 60 days. The third, in which the earth was created, 75 days. The fourth, in which the grass and trees were created, 30 days. The fifth, in which all creatures were made, 80 days. The sixth, in which man was created, 75 days. In all, 365 days, or a full year. The first of the six principal good works they are taught to do is to observe the times of creation. The ancient Tuscans, or Eterians, allot 6,000 years to the creation, the order of which, with them, is much the same as the Mosaic account, only making a day a thousand years. In the first thousand, they say, God made the heaven and the earth. The next, the firmament, which appears to us, calling it heaven. In the third, the sea and all the waters that are in the earth. In the fourth, the great lights, the sun and moon and all the stars. In the fifth, every volatile uh, reptile and, and four-footed beast in the air, earth, and water, which agrees with Arcurius. See Gil on Genesis 125. And in the sixth, man. And whereas they say God employed 12,000 years in all his creation, and the first six being passed at the creation of man, it seems, according to them, that mankind ought to continue for the other 6,000 years. And it is a notion that obtains among the Jews that answerable to the six days of creation, the world will continue 6,000 years. It is a tradition of Elias, an ancient Jewish doctor, that the world shall stand 6,000 years, 2,000 void, 2,000 of the law, and 2,000 of the days of the Messiah. And Baal Hadarim observes that there are six alphas in the first verse of the chapter, answerable to the 6,000 years is to continue. And R. 
Kid Ahela says, at the end of the sixth millennium, the world shall return without form and void to its former condition, and the whole shall be a Sabbath. And very particular is another writer of theirs concerning these six days of creation, who, having spoken of the day of judgment, the resurrection of the dead, and the world to come, observes that the six days' work is an imitation and signs of these things. On the sixth day man was created, and the work was perfected on the seventh. So the kings of the nations shall be in the world five thousand years, answerable to the five days in which the fowls and creeping things of the water and the rest were created, and holding to their kingdoms will be a little within the sixth millennium, answerable to the creation of cattle and beasts, who were now created on the beginning of it, the sixth day. The kingdom of the house of David will be in the sixth millennium, answerable to the creation of man, who knew his creator and ruled over them all. And at the end of that millennium will be the day of judgment, answerable to man's being judged at the end of it. The sixth day and the seventh millennium will be the Sabbath. And a like notion obtains among the Persian Magi. It is said that Zoroasteres was born in the middle age of the world, so it was told him from the age of the first man unto thy age of three thousand years, and from this thy age unto the resurrection of three thousand years.